Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I'm Fleur, and welcome or welcome back to my little corner of the internet. I'm really glad that you're here, and I hope that you're well. Today is the long-awaited, slightly delayed, um, girl talk, talking about sexuality and intimacy. I asked you on my Instagram stories and on my community tab to send me questions. Um, from now on, I'll probably only be posting them on my Instagram stories, so if I have a video like this coming up, um, be sure to follow me on Instagram so you can send me a question um, about the subject. And a lot of you came through, and um, thank you for sending them to me. And I'm going to try to answer them the best of my ability. Um, keep in mind that I am not a licensed therapist or professional. I um, am just sitting here as your friend, telling you what I would tell a friend. In general, these questions, every question, I have this issue in every video, but there's so much context um, that is missing for me with your questions. And so, um, take what I say with a pinch of salt, and take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you are struggling with your mental health or you have suffered through trauma in which this video can be triggering, please don't watch it and reach out to your local physician. One other disclaimer, and then we'll get started. Um, you are always free to color and view sexuality as you please. As long as you are safe and comfortable and you feel empowered and it is consensual and just because I view things a certain way does not mean that you should view it the same or that I should view it differently. Um, so yeah, just, okay, <laughs> I just feel like I have to say that. This is a safe space, so any weird or negative Sexualizing comments will be deleted immediately. I'm having a zero tolerance policy and um, Yeah, I just want you to feel safe and comfortable here. So if you want to share something in the comments Anonymously, I would recommend um, Please feel free to do so Today I am not specifically going to talk a lot about the subject of sex or sexuality intimacy, I'm going to focus on your questions, and then we'll just see if after this video you have more stuff that you would like me to talk about or touch on, we can do that. Um, first and foremost, what is important in sexuality and intimacy is uh, consent and boundaries, and for me, I'm choosing to do soft-spoken in today's video, um, and that's an intimacy boundary because I am going to talk about sexuality and sex a little bit um, and for me, whispering is more intimate it is intimate in a non-sexual way to me but um, I do get sexualized sometimes for making the content that I make um, which um, is a topic in itself but I feel more comfortable talking about this while doing soft-spoken also not an ASMR video I recommend for sleeping. It's just just for cozy vibes, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, I have my phone here and I'm going to read the questions to you. I won't be able to answer all of them, but these are the ones that were asked the most often. So um, I hope to cover as much ground as I can. Let's get into the first questions. This is kind of about um, virginity and first times. I'm 20 years old. Is it bad that I haven't had sex yet? Could it make guys uncomfortable? Um, it's absolutely not bad at all. And if it were to make a guy uncomfortable, it would be their problem. I think that um, 
you are always allowed to go at your own pace where you feel comfortable and um, if you are with someone and you are ready to take that step that person is going to want to be with you and already respect you and so I don't think it will be an issue at all for this person I think that most likely they'll want you to feel comfortable and for you to have fun together so I would definitely say that it's not bad at all at all I have a lot of friends who lost their virginity in their 20s if you are later than that it's fine it's it's really okay as long as you are okay with it and if you're waiting for the right person or something it's it's fine it's it's completely fine okay okay next should i feel disappointed about my first time because it was with my ex and we had a distant relationship slash it happened when we saw each other for the first time and i feel bad about that um i could in no world or situation decide for you how to feel or how not to feel about a situation um because that that is that belongs to you and i can only imagine when you are in love and doing long distance and you are just longing to see each other and then you finally do i can understand that something like that just happens um and finally seeing each other will bring up a lot of emotions and desires, I assume. So, if you felt good in the moment, and you had fun, and you felt safe in that moment, I don't think you have to be worried about it at all. Um, but if you feel bad about it happening the first time you saw them, if you'd wanted to wait a little bit, then I don't know, maybe next time you see them you can take it slower or with your next person you can take things slower and talk about it um, it's a learning experience so, um, yeah just like I said in the last question like you can do it at your own pace and as long as you felt safe in the moment and comfortable and you had a good time and I wouldn't worry about it too much the next few questions are kind of about reconnecting with your own sexuality and the first question is how do I deal with disconnection from sexuality after experiencing trauma um, first of all I really really want to highly recommend and suggest going to therapy and talking through your problems and experiences and traumas so you can really heal from them and work through them um, don't avoid them um, but if you want to reconnect with your own body after trauma specifically I mean reconnecting with your sexuality can be hard in various situations after a breakup or um, when you're struggling with mental health issues or in general stress, insecurity, grief those are all situations in your life that can impact your libido, the way you view yourself and your sexuality and sensuality. Um, for me, I um, obviously you know about this, but I went through burnout and that did really affect um, my sexuality because I was just very sick and um, made me feel very fragile again and for me what really helps to reconnect is to spend time with myself um, you can spend time with yourself naked to kind of like get to know yourself again I guess and look in the mirror look at yourself check yourself out um, obviously, gently, like, getting more comfortable with touch and intimacy with yourself, 
um, masturbation helps, but you can try to really set the mood for it. Um, light a candle, like kind of seduce yourself, I guess. I truly, truly recommend doing things like that to reconnect with yourself. And even if you're hearing this and you feel a little bit of like shame or uncomfortable, like I'm not gonna laundry for myself, um, I think the more you feel uncomfortable with me telling you that, the more I would recommend doing it because it will break you out of that shame. Because there is no one watching, this is between you and your body, or you and God, if you will, and there's so much love to discover on your own, and I really recommend doing that. Also, just taking it slow. You don't have to strive to, especially after experiencing trauma or a breakup or whatever, you don't have to masturbate and expect an orgasm. You know, if that's something that's hard for you, just try to enjoy the moment for a little bit. Like, it's the more expectations you put on yourself, the more pressure you put on yourself, the harder it gets. So, I would small steps and um, enjoy the moment as much as you can. That's just that's just from my own experience. I really recommend really depends on what you've been through. Um, and if you have a partner then that would all obviously be very different because you have to communicate that with them but I think the same goes for that just start with you know only uh, outer touches or just, someone tickling your back again and like the non-sexual intimacy that can turn into sexual intimacy try to maybe play around in that area a little bit that's what I would say to you at the moment um, next question one night stands for or against if for what would be your criteria um, what it stands for or against. I am personally not someone who enjoys one night stands. I've also never had one where I really hooked up with a stranger and never saw them again. I would end up dating that person for a little bit or go out with them for a while after. Um, and I had definitely then spent the evening getting to know them. Um, I do need a bit of an emotional connection, you know. Um, I'm not, I'm not actively for or against them. I think if it's something that you can do and you feel safe and comfortable and empowered in, then good for you. I just, personally, I don't feel that. Um, but what would be my criteria to go along with one? It would definitely be, I would definitely have to be in a very specific headspace, probably like on holiday or something, like knowing that I'm gonna leave and not see that person again, and be in a very open, silly, goofy <laughs> mindset, I guess, um, and then have good chemistry with that person, so a good sense of humor, like the attraction is there, you're flirting, they're flirting, you kind of have to be, it has to flow with that person in order to go any further for me, I would say. So, that would be my criteria. This is an interesting question. How to navigate horror stereotypes and be comfortable with your own sexuality? Um, I think this is a, a big question and I um, don't know if I can get into it too much. Also because I'm a little tired and not as sharp. I would like to be for a subject like this, but I think that, um, unfortunately, us women have been just endlessly shamed for owning our own sexuality and feeling empowered in our sexuality and confident, um, because, I mean, as a woman, you're immediately arrogant, you know, when you're confident, so, um, or you're a slut. I think that 
that, um, I don't know, this is something that I struggled with a lot also in, um, owning my sexuality and being really feminine and still being taken seriously. I feel like those kind of overlap for me. Because I also did not want to be sexualized while I was owning my sexuality and feeling confident. So I kind of started, you know, hiding to avoid being sexualized. But then I lost touch with my own sexuality and kind of got lost in that realm of where, where do I want to be? What do I, how do I want to present myself? Where do I feel most comfortable and confident? Because those are sometimes two different things for me. So how to navigate that? I would definitely say trying little things. Everything I advise will always be like baby steps, going at your own pace, experimenting a little bit. If you have, I don't know, it really depends on if this is how you, how you dress, for example, or how you go about your own sexuality. Like, do you like, do you casually hook up? Do you shamed for talking about that openly. I don't know what the context is of the question. Um, but I think it, if it's about talking about it openly, find a crowd that you're comfortable with, if you know that you're not safe in the environment to talk about it, I wouldn't. I, safety is important too, you know. It's a hard uh, territory. <laughs> Um, but definitely what helps me is when I get dressed, make the conscious decision, am I dressing for me or for someone else? Am I hiding something for me or someone else? And then actively pushing yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit. But with that also, like, go at your own pace. You don't want to be too uncomfortable when you're walking on the streets, you know what I mean? you, um, yeah, you can kind of, I think you can carve a path that works for you and where you feel comfortable. Um, and I very much have the mindset of if someone has an opinion about it or is cringing about it or shaming me for it, it says more about them than about me. Um, but that's hard to cultivate in the moment. Um, what helps for me too is the media that I'm consuming because there are so many corners of the internet that you can um, be confronted with and you can fall into an algorithm of fucking entertain people like, <laughs> I don't know, and people who are shaming women a lot, you know what I mean? And then there's also the incredibly feminist, empowering algorithm, and I think that looking up more pages like that will, and like, it will change your feed, and so it will change what you consume, and that really helps to change what you um, think of your feed, because media is such a big, big factor um, in our daily lives. So, yeah. That was very rambling. Um, tips for not caring too much about your body when in the moment slash getting over body insecurity and being vulnerable in front of your partner for the first time. My biggest tip is to express it. I think it's a very relatable question. I have definitely um, been in my head about these things, um, especially when I was younger and I was just discovering it all. Um, for me, I sometimes just really have to remember, like, this person wants to be here, and everything in their behavior already says that they want to be here, and they, they admire your body so much, and they just want to get with you and enjoy you, and that's a very empowering thought to have, and that just makes all my <laughs> insecurities go away, um, it makes me more confident, it makes me think, okay, look at me, have a good look, like, you know, discover me, like, I want to discover you. Everyone has 
insecurities, no matter what gender your partner is, your partner has insecurities. Um, it's a very natural thing. The best thing you can do is mention it and talk about it. Also, maybe you like to then be complimented a little bit more. You want a little bit more reassurance from them that they find you hot and sexy. And um, you can say those things. And um, work through it with them. I think the biggest thing to avoid is to get too in your head and be on your own with it because you're with someone and I would try to stay connected with that person and so talking about it for me is very relieving and it always helps and if that person, if you're scared of that person then being like oh I don't want that they don't deserve to be in the same room as you, truly, truly. So, um, I think making peace with the fact that you're gonna be nervous the first time, either way, with a new partner, it's always, like, you're getting to know each other, you, you know, you don't really know yet what's going on, it's always, like, there's always, like, this little nervousness, right? But it's also exciting and new and think making peace with the fact that you'll be nervous and talking about it with them, mentioning it to them. Um, I often say, even when I go on dates, I'll often say right away, like, oh, I'm nervous. And that immediately takes the nerves away a little bit. Especially if the other person's like, oh, I'm nervous too. You're like, okay, good. Um, so you can, you can tell them, like, I feel, I feel a little bit self-conscious know what to do with my body, you make me nervous, um, you can also ask to dim the lights a little bit or go under the covers if that's just what you're more comfortable with in the moment, you know, it's, it's once again that go at your own pace, baby steps, I think it's important because you want to, you know, work through things and grow through things, but you also don't want your lovemaking session to be exposure what I mean? Like, you want to have fun, get out of your comfort zone a little bit, but you don't, you don't have to do, like, all these things to, like, you know what I mean? I don't really have words, but I hope that you know what, what I mean. Like, you still have to feel good about it. Next up, feeling guilty to ask the guy to wait maybe six months into the relationship before having sex. Um, about consent and boundaries, I I get the feeling of feeling guilty, um, but I think what's most important is that you feel good. If someone, if, if you set a boundary like this, that's fine and valid and good for you, and I think that your partner, if they, if they like you, if they love you, they won't mind. It also builds a lot of tension and um, makes the heart grow fonder, you know? I think there's a very positive twist in that and I think that if they're the right p partner for you and it's a safe relationship so far, they won't mind too much. Like, of course, they're going to be sad because they want to hook up with you, but they're not going to. There's no need for you to feel guilty about that because you have to feel okay with it. You have to feel good in the moment your partner would want you to feel good, so truly, truly, you can, you can also say to them, like, I'm finding it difficult to ask that of you, but it's just what I need, and I hope you'll respect that and accept that, and, um, you know, we can do other stuff, like, if you are okay with doing other stuff or the stuff that you do want to do, like, if you're kissing and whatever, like, you can still do that type of stuff, so, I understand the feeling of guilt, but toss it in the bin. Toss it in the bin. There's no need. And I think it's a very strong thing to do, and I admire you for it, to want to wait. Truly. I think that's a very admirable thing to want to do. Admirable thing. Okay. <laughs> Sixteen minutes goes. Next question. What advice do you have for dealing with anxiety? 
I think that I've talked about that a lot throughout this video. Um, I just hope that you keep in mind that it's very normal to feel anxious about it or like to feel nervousness around it because it is new and intimate. Maybe it's not new, but it, it's intimate and personal and how often are you naked with someone in a bed, you know, like there's <laughs> there are just things that you don't experience generally, I don't know, um, that often with that many people so it is in that way I don't, I don't know, I just think that it's a very normal thing to feel a little bit nervous about if you come out of a long relationship and you're hooking up with someone new again even though you had sex with your ex a gazillion times that first time with someone new it's just, uh, you know? that's very normal to feel and if you feel very okay about it and not nervous at all good for you as well um, tell us how you do it but I, I don't know, I, I think it's such a natural thing and I think that the best thing to do is to talk about it with that other person and you can do that with your clothes on before you hook up you can do that in bed after you've been kissing and you're you, like, there's the vibe of we're gonna continue to do this and take it further um, you can do it in the morning after they stayed over and you didn't hook up or um, maybe you hooked up and then realize you feel a lot of anxiety and it held you back you can talk about it then like there's no there's no perfect time to bring it up there's no time you should or shouldn't bring it up um, whatever you feel okay with I do recommend doing it sooner like I really recommend doing it um, before you make out if there's already the vibe of like the person is gonna stay over or you know what I mean like or maybe when there's a date where um, sex is on the table before you make a move or that person makes a move I would be like I need to talk about something there are some things I would like you to know before we do this can I share something with you before we do this um, that's usually what I do um, I don't know and I think that the conversation can go anywhere and it's in my experience really nice because you can go from I feel really anxious about this to I like it when you do this or this to me and I like doing this or this and I don't like doing that and you get to know each other's tastes a little bit and you can use that during playtime, you know? Um, I think it'll only help you guys bond, so that's the advice that I would give. Um, but I hope that that was enough to cover the question. Next, have you had friendships where it's difficult to distinguish between romantic and aromantic, emotional, and physical intimacy. I don't know if you mean it like this, but I've definitely had friendship where it, friendships where it was a little bit harder to discern. Like, is there a vibe? Is this emotional intimacy we're sharing going to turn into something more sexual? Or is it platonic? Um, I've had this experience only with men. Um, my sexual experiences have been with men as long as you have said that at the beginning but um, I think that everything I say goes for all genders so um, at least that's what I kept in mind so we've definitely I've definitely had moments where or that person or like a good friend asked a guy friend like look why don't we just hook up once like kind of like cross that line I didn't want that um, because I think for some people, um, non-sexual and sexual intimacy are really hard to discern and it really depends on where you're at as a person. Um, I think that um, I, I grew up where, in an environment where like platonic 
intimacy um, was very present and so I feel really safe within that space and maybe if you did not grow up in a space where non-sexual intimacy was very common um, by non-sexual intimacy I mean a physical touch um, but also um, sharing emotional things and being vulnerable and open with each other holding a space for each other um, that to me does not imply romantic intimacy that's also where I notice most of the misunderstanding and ASMR um, from my personal circle where they very quickly will sexualize it because of its intimacy and then I say like to mostly girls and we talk about makeup and stuff and it's like that's not sexual but the whispering is intimate and so people look at it as sexual uh, more quickly but for me whispering for me this always feels like having a sleepover with a friend and that's not sexual but if you haven't experienced that sooner you'll you'll more easily view it as something sexual you know what I mean so um, I understand that's coming from I just experience it differently but enough on that I um, so yeah I've definitely experienced that but I try to keep in mind that they're coming from different places I don't take it too it makes me feel uncomfortable of course when I have a good friend and they want to cross that line that that's uncomfortable and it makes me sad sometimes especially because then it's it was in my experience, it was a man that crossed that boundary, um, and that's that was sad um, because generally being sexualized by men as a woman was a thing. So it, it, for me, that really felt like oh my god, not not that. <laughs> but it's it's not about that. It's about the bond that you do have with each other. For me, it was the bond that I had with that person. Like I understood why. I can see why, but I was like. Um, but sometimes it is hard to discern when you're being when you're sitting on the couch with a friend and you're sharing something emotional and then there's a silence or maybe you're even hugging so my fridge just turned on it's not going to stop soon I think I'm afraid um, so we're going to wrap up the video but I wanted to say that um, sometimes that boundary is just the, the line is really thin and that's where the communication comes in again if if you're starting to feel uncomfortable but sometimes the tension can just be there and it's okay and it'll ebb away I don't know it's just um, if it makes you feel uncomfortable speak up about it if you're okay with it just lingering there a little bit that's fine um, so yeah those are all the questions that I written down that um, of summarized what you all asked me questions about definitely let me know if you'd like me to talk about this subject more or um, if there are any subtopics that you would like me to touch on um, and I will gladly do it I um, really enjoy talking about the subject I read it I wrote a thesis on sexual assault awareness it's a topic very near and dear to me and I would happily talking about it um yeah i think that was everything thank you for spending this time with me i'm wishing you a very very peaceful time wherever you are and i'll gladly see you in my next